When did Canada stop sending thank you notes slash emails post interview? We have been interviewing for several roles here and I've noticed that fewer and fewer people send any sort of meaningful follow up after their conversations. Does it matter? Have you seen this as well? No Stephanie, a follow up email really doesn't matter. The only reason you want to receive follow up emails from candidates is because you want to justify your own existence and feel some sort of semblance of power when people are griping to you after an interview hoping to get a job. People shouldn't need a gripe to you in order to get considered for a job. Just hire the most qualified candidate. Last year I interviewed over a hundred people at my work and hired dozens of them. Out of those hundred people that I interviewed, only one person in the entire year sent me a follow-up email saying thank you for the interview. And that guy didn't get hired. Do you know why he didn't get hired? It's because he wasn't the most qualified candidate for the role. I don't care what kind of follow-up emails people send me, it really has no bearing on whether I hire you or not. And if you, Stephanie, are an impartial manager and an impartial recruiter, you're really not going to care if a candidate sends you a follow-up email or not. It's completely meaningless. Kelly says, here's why 100% remote work won't work for much longer. 1. Electricity costs have gone through the roof. 2. Everyone is scared to turn the heating on. 3. Grads coming into the workforce need to experience office culture. Just because we can work remotely doesn't mean we should. Kelly, who, by the way, describes herself as reinventing HR's lame reputation in her job title, is trying to tell employees that they shouldn't work from home because they shouldn't have to heat their house and it's expensive to heat your house. And because of that, you should probably come into the office and let the company provide for you. Let's just give the company one more thing that they provide us that ties us to the company. They already give us health care, probably. They already give us our primary source of income. In some cases, the company provides child care. Let's also throw heat into the mix. Let's create more reasons why the worker is dependent on the company. You know what Kelly's comment reminds me of? There's this game called Frostpunk where essentially you are in a post-apocalyptic winter world and you're near this coal plant and you have to build a town around the coal plant. And the whole premise of the game is you have to survive the cold winters and you have to venture into the barren wasteland, the post-apocalyptic snowy wasteland, to find other survivors. And then you bring those survivors back to your coal-fired engine and you have the survivors trade their labor in exchange for heat. I feel like Kelly just spent a weekend playing Frostpunk and she was like, yeah, you know what? This is good. This is, this is a good idea. I'm going to turn this into a LinkedIn post. You shouldn't work from home because the company needs to provide you heat. Chris Castaldini, keeping it real. That's his job title, guys. Chris's job title is keeping it real. He gets paid to keep it real. So you better listen to him. Chris says, I drove to the office today. First time in a while. It should have only taken me 30 minutes door to door. It took me an hour because of Austin traffic. When I got downtown, my normal parking garage was full. I had to find another one and pay five times more. I had to pay for lunch instead of eating something out of the fridge. I needed to get gas. I'll, I'll most likely be stuck in traffic on the way home as well and rush to make it in time for my son's baseball game. But do you know what? I'll do it all over again tomorrow. Why? Because there's nothing like seeing your people face to face in an office. Nothing like listening to other fo phone calls and sales pitches from your neighbor. Nothing like breaking bread and talking through life, work, and opportunities with your colleagues. The total work from home cul culture will never persist. I guarantee it. Chris, you're like super self-aware of all the reasons why people want to work from home and you're also trying to play 4D chess and somehow turn those reasons around to be negative things. You drove to the office today. You spent an hour in traffic both ways. That's two hours of your day. That's two hours that you could have spent working out, doing errands, or just spending more time with your family. But no, you decided to spend it in traffic. The parking garage was full. So you had to find another one and you had to pay five times more. So you're wasting money on parking when you didn't need to. You had to pay for lunch instead of eating something out of the fridge. Again, wasting money when you didn't need to. I needed to get gas. Gas is super expensive right now and you're wasting money when again, you don't need to.
Chris says he had to rush home to make it in time for his son's baseball game. Chris, why don't you just work from home so you don't have to rush anywhere? You're inducing stress on yourself. You're adding extra stress, which is super unhealthy for a person, into your life. You're unnecessarily doing this to yourself when you really don't need to. And why? The reason you tell us why you're doing this is because you like listening to other people's phone calls and sales pitches from their cubicle next to yours. If you're sitting in a cubicle farm with just hundreds of people and there's phones going off everywhere and your neighbors around you are talking constantly and people are moving around and making noise and it's just this constant hum of sound and activity, that's not conductive to being productive at work. That's just gonna be super distracting. It's a lot better to sit in your own home office where you have peace and quiet. You can turn on a little bit of background music if you want and you can actually really concentrate on your tasks driving and punishing yourself sadistically and going to the office when your job really doesn't demand it just to be around this chaotic environment. It, it makes absolutely no sense. Most people want to work from home and they want peace and quiet. They want to do their tasks and be left alone. That's it. This guy says, I'm Russian, but I live in Argentina, Buenos Aires. I want to get married and start a family. I'm a programmer. I work remotely. I make good money, even by U.S. standards. For acquaintance, I want to invite you to Argentina for six months. I want to offer you a trip to the most beautiful places in South America on a motorcycle. If you are interested in this offer, text me. I will explain the details. And then you have this picture here. It says, I want to marry a U.S. citizen. Nice guy, 38 years old. I love motorcycles and travel. I earn a lot. I plan to earn much more. First of all, I don't think any woman's going to want to fly around the world to spend six months with some dude she doesn't even know just because of a LinkedIn post and then go on road trips across South America on a motorcycle. That just sounds like you're trying to abduct someone. This really sounds like you're just trying to kidnap somebody, not find somebody to marry. And the fact that you have to say that I earn a lot of money, you said it like three or four times in your post. The fact that you have to say that makes me think that you really don't earn that much money. Most people who earn a lot of money don't constantly have to self-justify to themselves by saying three times in a single LinkedIn post how much money they earn. Trent says, there are two coffee shops in my hometown. I drove to the local coffee shop first, only to realize they were closed. The other coffee shop is across the street, a large multinational corporation. They were open. Even though the multinational has worse product, they got my business because they were available. Staying open in horrible weather, doing the little things your competition cannot or is unwilling to do separates who wins and loses over time. The difference I see is you have a giant multinational corporation that really doesn't care about their workers at all and sees their workers as expendable. On the other hand, you probably have a smaller little mom and pop shop that has a small staff and actually cares about the safety of their staff. The multinational corporation made their workers risk their safety by driving to work in a snowstorm just so that the corporation could make more profit. Meanwhile, the small mom and pop shop probably told their workers that that it's too dangerous to drive and you guys can just come to work tomorrow or whenever the weather clears because the smaller shop put their workers safety above their profit margins. While everyone is getting drunk and celebrating New Year's tonight, I am binge watching videos of Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone, fully preparing to hit the ground running and hustling in 2023. Have fun staying poor. If you hustle so hard, why are you waiting until 2023 to start doing things? This seems like you made some sort of weird New Year's resolution because you think January 1st is a magical date when your whole life changes. If you were really serious about improving your life and taking steps to change your circumstances, you wouldn't wait until the new year. You would have started this in October or November or even July or June or, or something like that. People who are actually successful and driven to succeed don't wait until the new year's to set some sort of resolution to change their life. They just start taking action as soon as they recognize a deficiency. The cost of Jeff Bezos' space company would only fund the U.S. government for seven hours. The problem isn't billionaire spending, it's government spending. The problem is people like you simping to billionaires who don't even know that you exist. If I don't get back to you on LinkedIn over the next few days, it's because I'm offline until Monday. This is probably the most excited out of office I'll ever set as I'm actually marrying the love of my life and my best friend, Bridget, on Friday morning. 
I promised her that for such an occasion, I would take a couple days off LinkedIn. See you on the other side. Why is your marriage the only thing that's a good enough reason for you to get off LinkedIn? Who cares about Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or anything else like that when you're getting married? That's a significant life event that should only happen once in your life. Why are you saying that, oh, I'm sorry, I got to take a break from LinkedIn because I, I got to go do this marriage thing. I bet you five or six years down the line, you're going to get divorced because your wife is going to realize you're a corporate simp who cares more about his job than his family. Sahil says, a salary increase makes you happy once a year. A healthy workplace keeps you happy throughout the year. The problem I have with this post is that you're making these things mutually exclusive. Why do you have to have one or the other? Why does a salary increase have to exist in a separate bubble as a healthy workplace? To me, a healthy workplace is a place that recognizes its employees' contributions instead of just giving them the once a year cost of living increase. If somebody is producing, if somebody is providing for your company, they're increasing revenue, they're driving sales, they're doing whatever thing your company does very successfully, you should recognize those people throughout the year. You should give them salary increases, you should give them promotions, you should give them bonuses and things like that when they do those things you shouldn't wait until the end of the year to give that to people you can have a healthy workplace and you can pay people well you can have a great work-life balance and still have a profitable corporation none of these things are mutually exclusive you don't have to treat the worker poorly in order to have a successful company you don't have to micromanage employees in order to make sure that they produce None of these things are separated. You can have all of these things if you build a company correctly. That's it for this one, guys. If you don't know who I am, my name's Levi and I make videos on corporate cringe. If you want to see more stuff like this, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.